Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. We're in Winnetka at a car show called Fuel Fed, and I'm here with Tim Olson. Tim, good to see you. Good to see you. And Tim, first of all, he's a British car guy, and not only a British car guy, but Tim, uh, tell us uh, why the interest in the British cars? How did this all start? I started with a Rolls Royce. Okay. And then I decided, you know, a lot of parts in British cars are the same, so I should focus on one country. So that got me going. At this point, I have eight British cars, <laughs> no. more than I know what to do with. <laughs> and you like to restore them. Tell me about I, the one we're going to see right now. This one actually uh, looked good when I bought it, but it had been sitting in a garage for 12 years. So we had to redo all the mechanicals. And you do this yourself? I did this myself with help. With help. So come on, yes. let's take a look at the car okay. you needed some help with. Stand right next to me. We'll start on the side because we're already here. Yes. And the sun's beaming on your car. It looks just fantastic. That I'm actually going to walk around okay. the back first, only because people are coming around the front. Go ahead, you were saying something. Well, this car color is called Romaine Green. And the previous owner, who was the daughter of the original owner, was meticulous in restoring it to the color. So this is the original color, which is known as Romaine Green. From Glen Perry. It's also the first year that these cars were imported into the United States. What's the, uh, Tim, what's the reaction of people when you're driving this car? Oh, a lot of people say, well, they think it's a Volkswagen for one thing, <laughs> which annoys me in no end. <laughs> it's, uh, a lot of people wave and say hi and say, what is this car? Because yeah. most people have never seen this car before. Yeah, so there's a good story. It's a friend maker. That's right. It's a friend maker. Let's take a look at the front now. We've actually got some open room. So we did that a little bit in reverse, but that's all right. And you shared with me that the car, and we're going to see this in a second, doesn't have turn signals. That's right. So we have kind of electronic turn signals that we don't have on there right now, but we're going to see how the turn signals actually worked once we okay. start the car. Yes. So these are just marker lights here. Yes. Okay, so we got marker lights, this nice little... A lot of trim detail. Yeah. There's one very interesting detail Please. on this car, and that is at the last minute, mm -hmm. they decided to make this car four inches wider. Really? So you see the four inches that they added right here? Yeah. That was necessary to make it wider. However, they've already made a bunch of bumpers. To save money, they did not make new bumpers. They just cut the bumpers they had in half oh, really? and put a spacer in. Wow. Which, of course, the integrity of the bumper was pretty much compromised. Yes. But there wasn't much there to start with. <laughs> so if you see this on a Morris, you know this is one of the very early ones. That was, it, that was split. That's right. And it was also has a place, I still have it, you can crank this car. Wow. So you know, batteries were not very reliable in 1950. So once in a while, people crank the car. Wow. All right, well, let's take a look at the interior. And we can do that. Let's open the door for just a sure. moment. Now, were there coupes as well? Yes, there were coupes as well, but they were there were more more coupes than there were convertibles okay. or drop heads, as the British said. Drop heads. Okay. And this is interesting too, how this frame goes all That's the way around. That's right. I think they did that to save money, just like everything else. Very basic interior, obviously no clock, no radio. You just listen to that. Is this a light? What is this that I'm featuring? That's a cigarette light. Cigarette, cigarette lighter. Ashtray. Cigarette ashtray. Okay, got it. And we've got a stick shift car and we have our pedals. You're wonderful. It is a four Pro. speed, okay. which is unusual. And this car was designed. What is this? Well, that's the turn signals. Or they call them trafficators. Trafficators. And we're going to see how those work in a second. So there's the trafficator. This car was designed by Alex Isagonis, the man who invented the Mini really? a number of years later. This was his first car. And he was adamant that he wanted this car to be front-wheel drive. Is that right? And 
the, in the bay inside, the engine bay, has plenty of room for that to happen. Let's but the owners of the company said, no, that would be too expensive. <laughs> but if you look at this car... So is it rear-wheel drive or front-wheel drive? It's, it's rear-wheel drive. Okay. But it's small on the outside, but with his goal, making it big on the inside. The only one of my little cars that actually has room for people to really sit in the back seat. Let's check that out. There's room. There is room. All right, well, let's take a look under the hood. Okay, hang on. You gotta sure. go to the other side because... No problem. Remember, this is a, started out as a right-hand drive car, and then they changed it. I just saw one other thing on the interior that I'm curious about. If you okay. can keep that open. What is this? That's the heater. The heater. There's a little emblem right there. Okay. And then the heater information. Okay, got it. Okay, great. That was an option. That was the only option that the you heater. could get. Yes. And most people didn't get it, but this car had a weak heater. Wow. This car has no water pump. Water just circulates by the hot water goes up and the cold water goes down. That's amazing. <laughs> this engine also is a flathead side valve four engine. There was an engine used in Morris cars before World War II. The story is these engines were so light that during the Blitz, they attached this engine to a water pump, carried it around through the streets, and used it to put out fires. They used this to put out fires. They used the engine, because the engine was so light and small, that they could carry it over the rubble. And this came with the car? Yes. Okay. That was a cool uh, spot. Well, this is the, the only pump is the heater is an optional pump that runs on the outside of the fan belt. Jeez. Which I don't have connected because it would reduce the right. power. The of fantastic 27 and a half <laughs> horsepower down to even less. Let me, let me take a look on this side for just okay. a second. It's got a nice horn on it, that's for sure. Yes, the horn it has is almost... a nice big horn, which was original. All right, well, let's do this. Let's start it up. Okay. Let's, uh, I want to hear the horn. I'm curious now with the size of that horn. And then we'll show the indicators. I'll get on the side and we'll show how okay. they, how the, what did you call them, traffic? Uh... They're, they're known as trafficators. Trafficators. We'll take a look at the trafficator. Trafficator. It worked. <laughs> it has a light in it. That's the only traffic, the only way you can uh, tell people you're turning. There we go. Let me get just a little exhaust note. <laughs> Wonderful. Tim, let's shut her down. Come on out. Another shout out to Alex Isagonis is, I'm 6'4 and I can easily fit in this car. I was just and thinking that the same thing. With the top up, the convertible top up, I can still fit in the car without hitting my head. That's wonderful. But I believe in those days, most people wore hats. Ah. And so they had to make the interior of the car taller. Got it. There we go. Let's shut this. Let me okay. just feature this right here too. What is this right here? That's the, uh, the, the spring for the front spring. Okay, front suspension. Yes. Okay. Almost look like an engine part there. Yes, it does. All right. But Let's shut that. What you can't see is the fact that it has rack and pinion steering, which is very unusual for this time. This is also a unibody car, which wow. was another early first for, for a car. Another Alex Isagonis uh, innovation. Outstanding.
Well, Tim, first of all, thanks for your wealth of knowledge on this car. And you're right. I mean, when I seen it, I was just you know kind of captivated by its its uh, unique and, and interesting styling. Yes. And I wanted to come by and say hello. And thanks so much for being on my car store and sharing your car with us. Happy to be there. Thanks.